from a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls. Here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as they're saying to do battle with the Arizona Cardinals. This is Alvin Kamara, who made the Pro Bowl in each of his first two NFL seasons. Call it no gain on the game's first play, and it's second down now. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D-tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. And that's going to be intercepted. The all-pro corner, Patrick Peterson. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. This is David Johnson, the former All-Pro, and he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Big Sheldon Rankins there to bring him down. Being strong up the middle is imperative. I don't care what your sport, but in football, when you've got a D tackle who can contribute not only to occupying bodies, but also making plays on the ball carrier, that's when you have the cornerstone of a solid run defense. On second down, Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards there, first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. On second down, it's Johnson. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play, as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Off the draw, here's Johnson. And he does not get to the first down marker. As they stop him at the 19, it's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. On fourth down, here's Zane Gonzalez for the Cardinal field goal. This from 36 yards out. Gonzalez's kick is good. And the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Saints ready to get the football back here on offense. And let's go back to the 5-1 and one start that they've had this season. Obviously very impressive with Bridgewater at quarterback. Last week against Jacksonville, the defense was good, but Jacksonville's defense is good, as you noted. And then this week, they're going to go to Chicago against another very stout defense. Yeah, the Chicago Bears defense can hold people down, so you wonder...
can either one of those offenses make any type of headway? The Saints have done just enough. Their five wins, a total of 24 points. But they have to love the fact that when their defense trots on the field, they feel like they're in every game. Ready? From the 24, ready, they'll go ready. again on second and 10. Check safety, check safety. Breeze leaves this one with Camaro. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. I don't think you got it, sir. Breeze now. And this is going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, the dangerous Pharaoh Cooper. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Arizona ready to get the football back. I want to revisit that week six win over Atlanta because we mentioned it was 34-33. What we did not mention is they got a little assist from Matt Bryant who missed the extra point and that got the Cardinals to 2-3-1. and one. You don't see Matt Bryant miss extra points. He is so dependable. But remember, they brought him back this year as a kicker after trying some other people. But how about this for the Cardinals? First win at home since October 28th of last year. First time with consecutive wins since December of 2017. I do believe they are moving in the right direction. Are they contenders this year? The answer to me is still no. But with what they put together with this roster, the controversial co uh, choice at head coach, I like where they're headed right now. Yeah, because the two straight wins have been over Cincinnati and Atlanta, but now they're 2-3-1, and and one, and all of a sudden people are saying, eh, maybe they are decent. And don't forget, many got? people thought Cincinnati what and Atlanta got? would beat them. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Throwing now is Murray. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A Cardinal first down on a gain of 13. Nice pass that time by the number one pick, Kyler Murray. Also drafted ninth in the Major League Baseball draft. He's the only person ever to be taken top ten in both sports. Go back to his Allen High School days in Texas. He was 42-0 as a starting quarterback. Freshman year, he was at Texas A&M. Then the transfer to Oklahoma, sat behind Baker Mayfield. Then his opportunity came last year. Boy, did he make the most of it. Won the Heisman Trophy and led the Sooners to the college football playoff. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And on third and three, they decided to go with a dime package. Yeah. Six DBs. Yeah, you're right. They've got six out there. Murray going to try to throw on third down. And he finds Fitzgerald. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. First grab for Fitzgerald. He's got a first down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. Oh, 
on second down now. It's Johnson, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. And here we go. Watch the pass. Watch the pass. Go ahead, go. Throwing is Murray on third down. He'll buy some time right. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. And he'll try and throw here on the fake. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And the Saints will have the football back. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. They complete it to Hill. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you're wondering, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Ready, Defense understanding, ready. as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Here's Kamara trying to run for it, and he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Breeze's throw on target to Cook. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. 25 yards that time. Jared Cook is a guy who's been around the NFL. He's been with the Titans, the Rams, the Packers. In the last two years in Oakland, now he makes a move to the Big Easy, where he pairs with Drew Brees and forms a nice little threat. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. First and 10 right at the 20. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. We're you ready. know that. Point Where eight, was eight. the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. Breeze again here on second and ten. Complete. Smith has it. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Saints spent a third-round pick on Trey Quan Smith out of UCF in 2018, and what a thrilling season for him. He was the guy that caught the pass from Drew Brees that moved him past Peyton Manning to become the all-time leading passer in NFL history. That'll be complete to Cook. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They call it old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from New Orleans. It's the Saints in possession as they come up now second and goal. 
Second down and goal. Breeze. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. But now it's third and goal. All right, everybody in the house had to figure that was going to be a one-yard plunge. I know I was fooled. How about you? <laughs> Absolutely. I had to readjust my eyes when it was a play fake. Good job defensively, though, to not bite. Too bad that didn't end the series. They stopped the hold in there. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This the most important of them all, third and goal. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement, and then when they realize those points aren't going to count, can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? His kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon, and think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here we go. Here we go. Now Murray throwing on second down. His throw incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target, and it's third down. Timing was just a bit off, and that can happen occasionally, even with these fine professionals in the NFL. Well, on those out routes, that requires precision, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Everyone has to be in sync from the time the quarterback hits his back foot and delivers the ball to the receiver turning to find it. On third down, Murray looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. T.J. Williams with a pick, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. They were looking for Johnson that time. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, yeah, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Second and goal from inside the five. Let's make these babies cry. They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either 
called Ready. pressure, or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Lutz puts this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 22, here's second and eight. Now Murray. Johnson's got it complete. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make it third down. The Cardinals on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. From the gun on third down, Murray. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Well, it wasn't a big strike. But that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And yeah, they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Throwing on second down. 
Breeze. And this is Cook with a grab. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And that is incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Tackle made there by Kiko Alonso. A lot of people felt Johnson was a little misused during what was a disappointing 2018. 940 yards on the ground, seven touchdowns. Great for most, but not the season Johnson was hoping for. And he said this offseason, there are a lot of good running backs in the NFL, but I'm the best. And now he's trying to prove it, hoping to get back to the production that sent him to the Pro Bowl in 2016. That would certainly help his rookie quarterback. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now a first down run is going nowhere. He's going to be dropped in the backfield, a loss of two. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and 12. Second down, here's Murray. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. To throw, it's Murray. And he's taken down here by the Saints. The sack coming from defensive end Cameron Jordan. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. On the return, it's Camara. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. The Saints coming out now to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Seven yards there and a first down. His 13th NFL season now, Ted Ginn, still a reliable target for Drew Brees. 787 yards in 2017, just five games last year due to injuries, but he still has the wheels. 
A tenth carry for Kamara. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and it may be a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. On second down, Kamara. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, it wasn't much of a gain, but we're getting near the two-minute warning, so maybe they just want to get to that point, regroup, and decide what they want to do the rest of the half. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he finds Cook. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here we go. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he'll go down at the 28. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Now, Breeze again. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away, incomplete. The safety, Buda Baker, there to force the incompletion. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. The kick by Lutz is good. And the lead will increase to six now. It's nine to three. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more it's who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. On second down. It's Johnson. 
The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Running from the gun, Johnson. And yeah, he's going to be stopped short of a first down as he'll get to him at about the 33. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five all the way down at the two-yard line. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they show confidence in their defense by punting it away. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll run. This is Kamara. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone, loose. And this will be gathered up in the end zone, and that's a defensive touchdown. That's something you have to be wary of on your side of the field, that close to the goal line. The defense, they are looking for that football. They got it. They scored it. You are so right, and the quarterback has to speed things up himself. So close to the goal line, they're going to get after you. Make sure you get rid of the football and in a safe place. Gonzalez good on the extra point. And that will give him the lead here as we get on towards halftime. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Yeah, he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. One yard gain brings up second and nine at the 29-yard line. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Watch left, watch left, watch left. 
So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. A Cardinal first down on a gain of 13. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the pistol, here's Johnson. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They go to Johnson again. Demario Davis, who was the Saints' leading tackler in his first year in New Orleans, in on the stop. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Murray. And the catch made by Johnson. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Here's Andy Lee now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Now the attention turns to the Saints' offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and, get and that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. And you need a big play? Go to your big play guy. Listen, that's football 101. When you have to have it, you expect that guy to step up. A lot of people call these receivers divas. Sometimes just leadership when they get in the huddle and say, get me the ball, I'm about to make a big play. Snap comes at one, and now Breeze. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The pro bowler, Michael Thomas, was the intended receiver, and now it's second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need Ready. to put some heat all on right. it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Breeze will try again on second down. And that's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn. And it'll bring up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Now Breeze. 
Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. That'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. And Lutz's kick is good. And they take the lead here by two, 12-10. Now, the kicker fest continues. He's been good, though, not through four of them now. If you're the kickers for these two teams, you know what you're doing next week in practice? Ask you're walking in all, Yeah, and besides that, you're walking into all the meeting rooms saying, you love us now, don't you? Now you love us because you need us, because that's all we've seen. Kickers scoring all the points. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Murray again. Second and ten. Screen play. Johnson. Twelve yards there and a first down. Before this season started, Johnson said this new offensive system would allow him to really be effective in the passing game. He actually likened it to 2016 when he had almost 900 receiving yards. He said one of his goals is to become the third player in league history to hit 1,000 yards rushing and receiving in the same season. They also noted that he's really comfortable in this scheme. It's like his days, his college days at Northern Iowa when he was part of a team that based out of a shotgun with a running quarterback. Here's Johnson. He's been busy this afternoon. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. That's a familiar call during this game. A lot of runs have been stopped right around the line of scrimmage. And how about the big D tackle there? Not just eating up blockers, but making the tackle himself. We're seeing a lot more hand movement from those big guys up front to shed blockers and then go get ball carriers. Murray going to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Andy Lee now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. 
Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Ready? First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And Thomas has it. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. We got three. We got three. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. That'll be complete to Cook. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 83 yards receiving now for him on the afternoon as he's got a first down here. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Complete. Smith has it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. This one into the hands of Ginn out wide. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Four. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Check, check, 43. Hey, watch the slant. <laughs> On the ground, this is Kamara. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. There's Breeze. And this is Cook with the ground. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 34-yard line. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On the ground, Kamara. The tackle there by Patrick Peterson. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Ready. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Right here, right here. Single, single. Single, single. Tag watch 13, watch 13. Tag right, tag right. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Breeze now. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. Kamara. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. We got this. 
Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense. Watch the slant. Watch the slant. On first, here's Washington. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Ready? Five eight, five eight. To throw on second and six, Breeze. His pass caught at the four. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. Cook's got it. Touchdown, Saints. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Will Lutz on for the point after. And that makes it a nine-point game. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. He finds an opening past the 40. Kyler Murray, a 1,000-yard rusher, is a quarterback in his Heisman campaign in Oklahoma. He's got the first down. Well, we know that Murray can run the football. He rushed for 1,000 yards during his final year at Oklahoma, better than seven yards per carry. And Cliff Kingsbury says, I trust him running the football. This is a guy that has known his quarterback since 2012 when Murray was a sophomore in high school. Kingsbury was in the OC at Texas A&M. He would go on to take the Texas Tech job, but the two maintained a great relationship. Both are from Texas, both quarterbacks, and both with fathers heavily involved in their football careers. With Cliff Kingsbury, he trusts his quarterback implicitly. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. And now Murray's going to set up the throw. On the move to his left. 
And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 38-yard line. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. But has not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big thing. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. To throw once more on second and ten. Murray completes it to Fitzgerald. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Cardinals on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and seven. Throwing is Murray on third down. And this is going to be complete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, ready, my theory is very ready, simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football and be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. A gain of three, second down. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And finally marked down at the 23. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 23. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Now Kamara. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. That's it, baby. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Bree's going to throw. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one-yard line. One-yard line. They gave up excellent real estate on that one. That's going to work really, really well for the guys who threw it. 95-56, Shotgun now for Breeze. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. 
Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So give them the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30. So now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. So now then the penalty's got them set up with a first and goal. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn there to make the grab. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that if someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. Now, they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. And we have to give credit to them for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Let's go, D. It's going to be a long day on this. <laughs> Throwing again on second down. Murray sliding out of the pocket. Fighting through, and he's got space. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in here. Zero. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. On second and ten, Murray. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and nine. From the gun on third down, Murray. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That's a first down and then some. A 32-yard pickup. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, Murray fighting, lost the football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Hey, 
So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 15 yards on the play, first down. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Last stop! Last stop! Five fifty six. Check, check, forty three. Watch the pass. Watch the pass. <laughs> Running with Camara. And room to run as he's up past the thirty five yard work. line. Now, again. after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The cards going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. They run it again with Kamara. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. on the play back at the 44. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. All day, baby, let's 
So this one a victory here for New Orleans. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was. It all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.